Sup, bitches. I thought that would be a good, appropriate lead-in for this particular aspect where we indeed try to make the world into our bitch. So we have Pluto on the midheaven. What is up with this when we see this in the natal chart? This is a very interesting aspect to um, end up with because it implies a great deal of uh, restriction, fear, but also the chance and the opportunity to go beyond that into something much, 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 much greater. So when we have Pluto on the midheaven, we're basically fighting direction. We are using our own power to get where we want to go. Um, resistance is a theme in the life of people that have this one. They will only go the way that they want to go. And their repressed stuff, their difficulties, the things that they are trying to avoid is very much what is front and center in that driver's seat for these people. So they tend to have uh, an aura of uh, fear or power or um, there's something scorpionic about these people. Uh, if we have Pluto square to the ascendant or the descendant, it's going to very much exacerbate the tendencies that we see with this particular position. Uh, if we have the Sun in aspect to Pluto somehow, it can make this much more conscious. So it can be less of a difficult force in someone's life. They have much more chance of seeing this um, in you know three-dimensional reality, not just hear tell about this, because they do hear about this problem, not so much see it. So what they're really doing is um, learning to come to grips with the influence that they have over their environment. Their cravings for control are leading their life. That is what they think is the point on their compass. And so they're ultimately very much guided by their fears and guided by their repressions, guided by their issues in general, not by the higher self, not by the all-knowing self. And so this is a very, Saturn here, Pluto here, is a very illusory placement to break through. The, um, the loop of the story that they have created for themselves is so complete. Now we see that with most Saturn stuff and we see that with Pluto too. This really, really amps that up when we've got it on the midheaven because this is what we are consciously deciding that we're going towards to do. And so their reactions can be very disproportionate to the uh, stimulus that they're receiving. And this is because they know that they have to keep control. And so they tend to overreact to what it is that's being presented to them because in their mind that keeps you in your place. So if they can't control things, if they can't make things go one way or the other, if they can't influence their environment, and many, many times this is going to be unconscious, you know, it's not going to be, sometimes it's, it's really conscious. They know that they're a bit of an environmental bully. Sometimes they don't get it because we have all other unconscious things going on. The sun is not an aspect, blah, 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 blah. And we have this extremely unconscious part of the chart leading. So we tend to... Um, find that they do not compromise. They want the environment the way that they want it. They, if they don't get that, then they can have actual feelings of rage or hatred towards you. Um, because if, if you try to, to, to make them do anything, or if you don't agree to what it is they want, it just triggers these responses in them. 
So you have to look at the strength of their Pluto. Many times it's not going to be something that becomes volcanic. Many times it is. You have to look at everything with this placement. But even if it's not coming out outwardly volcanic, inwardly they are just wanting to string you up. So there is a great feeling of entitlement that comes with this aspect. And they get very, very insecure. Sorry, my light is going to keep going on and off here, so I have to keep messing with it here and there because I don't edit my videos because I just don't have time. They are insecure when they are not manipulating their environment. Sometimes they realize this in a moment of clarity. Descendant Pluto does not generally have these moments, but Pluto on the midheaven does have these moments where they have an opening in their consciousness. And they can, see, they hear tell that they're scary. They hear tell that they are the go-to person when it comes to who we want to do the dirty work or who we need to get this done or that done. They hear tell that they might come off as a little uh, controlling. Generally, they don't agree with that. Um, people tend to hand them power and ask them to do the undesirable things, especially in the workplace, because they see them as capable of doing those plutonic things, because we see them as acting those plutonic things out, whether or not it's this, you know, extremely volcanic way or not. We get a sense that this is the go-to person when it comes to any kind of assassination attempt on anything. And so they are used to being fingered for the one that is capable of uh, more than meets the eye. And sometimes this is flattering to them, sometimes not so much. It depends on the rest of the chart. So what's happening is, you know, unconsciously, but in an unconscious fashion, and I'm sorry, it's unconscious, but it is in a conscious fashion, meaning that they are bringing to bear their Pluto, which is that unconscious repressed part of us, to a conscious place in their environment. They're, they're, they're going with their fear. They're going with their anger. And so when they have these moments of clarity, that presents these moments of vulnerability that we can then have sort of an, an in, in a window into going beyond this aspect, into trans, transmuting this aspect into something greater where it isn't the control that we're seeking over the environment. So we'll get to that in a second. How do we do that? So we're extremely attached to the outcomes in the immediacy of our environment with this particular aspect. The midheaven is what we build from the fourth house to become. It is the work that we put into things. And so it's the culmination of our practical efforts in the world. When we have Pluto on the midheaven, we cannot allow things to turn out as they will. We cannot allow things to be as they are, because that brings in this en en enormous amount of secure insecurity. See, Sun, Saturn, hard aspects, Pluto, sun aspects, Pluto, midheaven, sun, midheaven aspects have this same ring to them in general. There's just the details here between them. So awareness does not know fear. These people are so out of touch with their actual awareness, which is what they're not allowing their compass 
to be led by. It's not that they don't have direction, it's that they have forged this extremely stuck um, needle and stuck it on their compass. And they actually control it with their finger, right? They don't let it spin as it will. They control it with their own finger. And um, awareness doesn't know control. Awareness doesn't know fear. And so the less they try to control, the more in control they find that they actually are when they make that connection to higher self and kick the fear, the mind, out of the driver's seat here. And mo a lot of aspects are like that. That's what's really behind it. It's just the details and how to get there. So the less you try to control these people and the less they try to control their environment, the less they suffer and the less they make you suffer. You really have to turn them loose if you want them to really have any sense of security. We think that in taking care of them, especially because these are combative children, these are, deaf, these are children that are born with an extraordinary will. And we generally come from an environment where there's a certain amount of tension or we had a powerful parent, because unconsciously we are fighting that parent. We are challenging that parent to let us go. We are challenging that parent to allow us our autonomy. And so we take this out on the environment. We take this out on our authority figures. And we become known for being difficult. So we be, we're come from a difficult being in childhood and, and we this just becomes this armor casing that is uh, almost impenetrable except that it's Pluto it's not Saturn Saturn's even more impenetrable Pluto implies change Pluto wants to change Pluto hungers for change Saturn resists it and so and and Saturn is the father of Pluto so when when it's on them in heaven we are gluttons for punishment because ultimately feel like we deserve it. We are acting out in ways that invite difficulty. And so we have to get down to what is it that I feel like I deserve? What is it that I'm trying to get people to pay me back for? Is it abuse that you're blaming yourself for? It's something repressed here. Is it, and what we don't see controls us. What we don't see has the power. And so the blind spots that we have with this particular placement are enormous when it comes to the amounts of control that we have thought, we've assumed, we've had the illusion of control all of our life. And so what you have to get down to, okay, what are you punishing yourself for? Stop trying to control your parent. You're inviting in the difficulties that you're trying to avoid by being ready for combat at the midheaven level here. So oppositional defiance is really thick with this particular placement and it can come on early. They're trying to pull the truth out of everybody at the midheaven. They're demanding it they are acting in ways where their truth then can be the truth because in that their security. So do you see the extent of the control that they try to take here? It's not like it is at the seventh house where we're trying to push others to take that control and then we can blame them for it. We're trying to take control and we are taking all the blame for that and the guilt that we live with with this particular placement is complete. So, we strongly attract what we fear. That's just the bottom line. We are extremely invulnerable with this placement, but the lesson in it is to become vulnerable, enlightenment, contacting the higher self, transmuting the, the, the difficulties of Pluto is about letting go of those ropes of 
illusory control. And so, this is something that we can transform into a life of unattachment. First, we're going to have to go through a certain amount of reconditioning here. And uh, people that have mastered this particular placement are people that usually have some kind of um, career or hobby or talent or ability that allows them to be psychically or energetically open. You see this placement in the charts of psychics or of people that have a highly developed sense of their environment in a way that they can actually explain that to you or they can they can make something out of it 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 isn't a sense it it, it is but it they can do something with it because this is the midheaven they can develop this into something this is somebody that has worked beyond the limitations and the control that we perceive we must have with this particular aspect because they are vulnerable and open to all information. They become vulnerable and open to their environment. So it becomes more of a Neptune on the midheaven to kind of transition that we go into. So it's really about letting go of the illusion that you ever had control and understanding that you are not responsible for everything. You, you don't have to control everything. When you let that go, all of a sudden, all this energy is freed up towards doing things that you want to do, to, to doing things that make you happy, things that raise your vibration. We have a dark vibration when we have this particular placement. Now we can raise that by coming up out of that and developing the ability to be sensitive and vulnerable and changeable in our environment, in our relationships, in our jobs. So this is one where we have to allow our fears, that is that means the mind, our conditioning, basically our birth chart, to die and we have to transcend that into living in a way where our compass is not set by our finger to where we want to go based on what we don't want. So we got a lot of what we don't want so we have a lot of contrast to compare to with this particular placement. That is one of the reasons why then we have this a beautiful offering of what we could have, what we do want. In contrast, it provides the ability to say, okay, I know what I don't want. Now I know what I do want. And so the clarity that we can achieve with this particular aspect is extraordinary. But there are a lot of people who are not going to get there with this particular placement because the stories that we tell ourselves are so seriously believable and the ability to become vulnerable entails allowing our ego and our fears to not dictate that we believe those stories are not because what we're trying to do is we're trying to be that person that doesn't have those fears, that person that is, you know, pushing through everything. And But do you see how that is a reflection of your fears, that you're actually doing and acting out what it is you think you're not doing and acting out? And so, yes, we're our own worst enemy with this particular placement. We are. But there is also great power here in a way that if you don't use it, you have it. 
when we get to the real meaning behind things, when we get to a real understanding of the awareness that lies behind the birth chart, we understand that everything is paradox. And this position, especially in conjunctions, that's what they actually do in your chart. They're seeding you for understanding um, and living in that place of paradox. We'll get to that in a different video. This one is interesting in that it offers that glimpse into in holding something lightly, in not controlling, in putting it out there, and not having attachment to the income outcome, that's when we get it. That's when our we are not acting like a bomb that has gone off and then the shock wave is pushing away what it is that we're actually trying to attract. That's the energy of this. We think that in, okay, I'm going to show up and I'm just going to lay it down and I'm going to have delivered up what I want to deliver. Okay, that may work in the short term, but it creates insecurity because you know that now everything depends upon you keeping that control. So you become my daughter's chihuahua that is so bent on keeping control of things that he has no control of things. And so it's such an interesting aspect that offers these amazing, amazing chances for really deep, ultimate transformation. But most people are not going to get there with this particular one. But respect people who have this because these are souls who have come a long way and they are being given a chance to do something great in this life. So whether or not we get there or arrive, that really doesn't matter. That's part of the problem with this particular aspect. It's really not about arriving. It's about understanding and about being and about unraveling what it is we think we're looking for. And all that makes sense when you get beyond the limitations of this particular aspect and blossom into this truly powerful figure that doesn't waste time trying to control anything. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to my channel. You can find me on the internet at truthandaspectastrology.com. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at truthandaspectastrology. And yes, I do private consultation. I'm mostly a relationship and intimacy astrologer, but I interpret all types of charts. And I'll be back super soon with more super cool videos. Bye-bye.